Update is sponsored by Bloomer's Home and Garden Center. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect the views of this station, its management, or Beasley Media Group. Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Holia Zamora. How are your roses looking? Fall is the second spring for roses. And with a little maintenance right now, your roses will look incredible all fall long. We've been talking about it for two years now. The spotted lanternfly adults have arrived in southern New Jersey. We'll give you an update in our second segment. Pat texted the hotline and asked when to store her elephant ear bulbs and asked about moss balls. We'll explain in our third segment. Pearl called us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline and had a follow-up question from last week's show on hydrangeas. She also asked a question about trimming azaleas. You'll hear her call in our fourth segment. Finally, in this week's What's Bugging You segment, grease ants, those tiny little ants that seem to appear out of nowhere, usually in the kitchen or areas where food is served or prepared. We'll discuss how to handle these frustrating insects in our final segment. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609 685 one eight eight zero. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers T-shirt. Call or text us at six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. And we'll see you in the garden. Have you ever dealt with dead areas in your lawn that pull up like carpet? You most likely are the victim of the Japanese beetle larva eating your roots of your turf. Grubs sever the roots from the crown of the grass plant, causing the turf from being unable to take in water. It leaves you with a dead carpet of grass. Fertilome is a solution to stop those pesky grubs from destroying your lawn. High Yield Grub Free Zone is a season-long grub control that protects your grass from the damage caused by grubs, mole crickets, larva of the European crane fly, green june beetles, bill bugs, and many more subsurface insects. So if you use VPG High Yield Grub Free Zone and protect your lawn, it's an easy-to-use product and does all the work. Simply spread it and water it in. It's that easy. Your lawn will be protected from grubs and dozens of other lawn-feeding insects. Use the product the professionals use, High Yield Grub-Free Zone. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilome's High Yield Grub-Free Zone and expect to have the best-looking lawn in the neighborhood. Smeltzer and Sun Feed Supply, Route 9, Cape May, New Jersey. Mastardi Nursery, Chester Pike, Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, Herfel Cross Keys Road, Washington Township, New Jersey. You're listening to Bloomer's in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider, or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Julio, cooler temperatures, low humidity. Well, it sounds nice. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. But that happens in the fall. Right. And we produce some of the most beautiful roses oh, that yeah. time of the year. Yeah, we do. But yeah. a lot of people have let their roses go, yeah. and they're kind of leggy. So now is a good time to prune them back. Yeah, right? great time. Anybody been following the five leaf stage where you go prune your roses below the five clusters of leaves? 
uh, if you haven't, now's a good time to start. Yeah. And I have some roses like that are just out of control. That that I, they're real leggy, and they're uh, by my infamous trash cans, of course, <laughs> where I have a lot of <laughs> plants <laughs> trying to hide my trash cans. Is that what they are? But uh, it's a beautiful yeah. rose. Right. But it's now it's like four or five oh, feet man. tall. There's yeah. there's only leaves on the top of it. <laughs> I'm gonna whack it. Oh wow! I am, oh, and it, and it, it there's enough time for it to branch out and to form some buds. There you go. And that uh, I'm going to give it a drench. Mm -hmm. Now, explain what a systemic drench is for you. Yeah, systemic drench is when you're going to um, put this uh, the chemical down and around the, the drip line of the plant. It, it's a you know it's a pretty much you know watered in, and uh, you're just going to easily just pour it right around the base of the of the uh, plant. Yep, it'll, it'll go into the root systems. All right, and and there's two options where you can use a granular, right. where some depending on the brand. It could be a fertilizer, an insect control that's imidacloprid. Okay, everybody sit down, relax. And imidacloprid along with a disease control. So you're getting the total package. Total, yeah. It is not organic, mm -hmm. so just keep that in mind. But it is the best control out there. Yeah. So you can do a, a granular or you can do a liquid, like you're, we're talking about drench. Right where you could put it in, you don't have to put it through a sprayer, you're not spraying the plant, but you're putting it around the root system. Like for instance, like say you get something you need to get an antibiotic for. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't rub the antibiotic on your skin, you yeah. take it in internally and then it works from the inside out. Right. And that's exactly the way that these drenches work and systemics work for that matter. Yeah. And it is the best control because it's long lasting. Yeah. Right. And that you'll have a clean plant, not only fall, but starting in the spring. Right. How about that, huh? Yeah, like <laughs> hey, that. make sure you do it. Mm -hmm. um, even if you did it in the spring, you get about six to eight weeks control. Mm -hmm. So that's starting to wear down at this point. It's a good time to give it another right. shot. shot. Again, a systemic yeah. drench. That's what you're looking for, and that's what we're talking about. So your local garden center can can help you out there. Just just go in and ask. I want a systemic drench. Right. They'll know exactly what you're talking about, and that just get the most you can for it. Like I, what I mean is get the one that has the fertilizer, the insect control, and the disease yeah. control all in one. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah. If what if you have some <clears throat> issues where I've got some bugs on them, or I've had I have some damage from from say. Gosh, Japanese beetles are probably gone at this point, oh, but yeah. uh, there are other insects that are on right. those plants. Spotted lanternfly. Yeah, another one. <laughs> right. We'll be Damn. talking about that. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and, but spotted lanternfly at this point, they're damaging. They're done damaging. I mean, they don't. They're not gonna. Uh, let me take it back. Their infestation now. They have one thing on their mind, and it's to breed. That's it. You know, that's all they want to do. The time when they were smaller and that they were the different instar stages, that's when they were feeding and, and doing more things. Now they're just breeding machines. Yeah. Now, again, they're not likely to be on roses. They could be. But you still can also spray your rose. Like I'm cutting mine back, so I don't really need to do much of a contact spray. But anybody that has roses that are they're not going to cut back hard they're only going to do that five leaf stage and and again let me explain when you cut back from the flower to the first below the first cluster where there's five individual leaves on a stem then that will produce more flowers if you cut it above that it's more than likely going to produce foliage growth so that's what we talk about below the five leaf stage, and that that's what we want. We want flowers. Right. That's the whole point of roses, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about fertilizer? Oh yeah, that's needed. There are heavy feeders. It's huge yeah. feeders. Yep. Um, you're going to use heavy both heavy. granular and a liquid fertilizer, a water soluble oh, fertilizer, yeah. not one or the other. You're going to use both. Yeah. Uh, we suggest rose tone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. One. Rose tone from a spoma is an awesome fertilizer well balanced it has you know everything in it it's organic yeah. so it releases slow mm -hmm. and it's a perfect time for you to be feeding those plants because again 
you're doing things now and in the fall to have better plants in the spring. Right. But with roses, I mean, yeah. they the West Jersey Rose Society has a spring rose show. Yeah. And I can remember talking with a friend of mine, John Johnson, who he said, we should have a fall rose show. And it's yeah. like, well, you're right. But, uh, <laughs> you know, often people don't think about it. Yeah. But it's a perfect time because roses are clean. And yeah. that it, because of the weather, the black spot isn't as severe. Yeah. It's a great time. Yeah. It's a great it time for it. But make yeah. sure you're doing both. You're, you're feeding it with both a granular and a liquid like fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And don't give up on spraying. Yeah. Don't give up on spraying because all of a sudden they're going to look really good. All right. Anything to add, Julio? No. When you're talking about the uh, fifth leaf cut, make yep. sure that the, that fifth leaf is is uh, looking outward from the plant. You don't want it going inward. Right. Because you know you don't want that. Then you'll get the flowers going in in towards the plant. That what and and what also what Julio was talking about too is that you need air cir circulation, circulation around yeah. that plant. So you want to open it up. So if you have any crossing branches, right. make sure you're cutting those out. Yeah, um, it's it exactly what Julio was saying. Like again, if if there's dead air in that plant, it's going to be more susceptible to disease issues. Yeah. And that again, it's when you're doing some hard pruning, that's what you have to do. And anytime you're doing like that fifth leaf stage, you're trying to improve the the plant and the structure of the plant always with pruning. Yeah. One last thing, Len. Yep. Make sure those pruners are clean. I'm always that's big, right. I'm always big on that. You, you do do that. How do you tell me what your method is of keeping your pruners clean? I always have a little bucket of water with a little bit of bleach or you know vinegar okay. or whatever, and just clean it up every time you you know you go from plant to plant. Right, and you're spreading disease. Right, and make sure you clean up all that uh, black spot and all that diseased uh, uh, plant uh, material on the on the ground. Exactly, because you're yeah. spreading it. That will stay in the ground, and those yeah. spores will stay in the ground, and all of a sudden next year you get it you get again. It you're wondering why. Yeah. All right, good all advice, right. good stuff. All right, we'll be right back in the garden right after this. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and, of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other compost, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Your next house plant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that house plant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant paired with the perfect container can bring a dynamic change to your home. A house plant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomer's in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 
1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, you know, the spotted lanternfly are now entering full stage of adult, adulthood. Oof. And now they're going to be a problem. Oh, boy. They, they are. And, and that most of our listening area is aware of them. Mm-hmm. Some, like our, our, our folks in, in Pennsylvania, they have been dealing with this issue for a while. I mean, they first came on the scene in 2014 in Berks, uh, I think it was. Um, what a mess. Oh, I mean, yeah. and New Jersey's had the river that went th- through Philadelphia that, you know, kind of— <laughs> Proportioned us off yeah. of New Jersey yeah. from Pennsylvania, oh boy. but they are here. Yes, they they are. are here. Um, Carl, our nursery manager, also my son, mm-hmm. uh, went into was well, he was walking his dogs in the woods. Uh-huh. Tree having completely coated, 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 oh my coated with oh. with mature spotted lanternfly uh-huh. two weeks ago. That's it. Uh, That's and it. and wow. it's. <sighs> It, it is a hard thing to deal with because they are in such mass and they're really small and they go through that seven stages yeah. and that now they're that, you know, that leopard, you know, it looks like a leopard coated white <laughs> leopard <laughs> um, spotted uh-huh. wings where it reveals right. that, that little bit of red underneath it. And we've always said they're kind of pretty. Kind of pretty, yeah. Yeah. Kinda. Step on them. <laughs> yeah. Try to step on them. Yeah. That's a, yeah. <laughs> Becky walked in the store mm-hmm. from being out, and they're not around bloomers. Yeah. She had one on her head. Yeah, I mean it was on her hair, <laughs> and of course you could see it. Right? Sandy, yeah. thanks, Sand. <laughs> Didn't tell her uh, okay. until the yeah. joke was well. Right. Anyway, <laughs> if you're getting an insight of how we uh, operate things at Bloomers, yeah. <laughs> we do have fun. Yeah. Um, but that's the point: is where all of a sudden now the adults are there. We're all used to to the smaller ones. We've been talking about that all season, but now the adults are there, and you know what that means, you know? Yeah. Brett, cue the sexy music. That yeah. they're looking for a mate, mate, and that what they're trying to do is now they're just going to want to breed. And sure. next year, New Jersey gonna is going to be unbelievable. unbelievable. Yes. Unbelievable, because I, you know, Pennsylvania has been bad. Philadelphia, right in Philadelphia, right in the center city, right. I mean, yeah. here at the studio, yeah, right climbing here. the sides of the buildings in yeah. September. Yeah. So here's what you have to do. First of all, you know, you, if you control them now before they breed and lay eggs, it's that much more of an advantage. And and here we go back with our thrin, right? Our thrins, thrins Julio. Yeah. Can can you explain what a thrin is, Julio? Permethrin and. Uh... Right, uh, delta methrin, sefluthrin, yeah. mm-hmm. anything with a thrin mm-hmm. on the end of it is a man-made pyrethrin, which has some residual, and it also is just a improvement because again we go back to well why don't we just use the original organic? It's because in sunlight it breaks down almost immediately, so you've got to shoot it, hit it, then you're lucky if it dies, where. The synthetic pyrethrins that they have a longer residual and they're just a much better plant. Now, you really don't need to know all of that, but I just we just like to educate our listeners. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one thing to look for, one of our favorites, is going to be Bonide Eight, yep. right? Mm-hmm. But also, Fertilome has that triple action, yeah. where it's a combination of pyrethrin and neem, right? Mm-hmm. There, there you go. That's a I, I really like that product. Bug blaster is blaster. bifenthrin. Look for bifenthrin in it. I mean, that is listed as being the best. Mm-hmm. If you go online, do a search for spotted lanternfly management for residents. It's from Penn State University, and that it's their extension service. And there is a I think it's a 20 page with lots of pictures. So yeah, you'll like pictures if you don't like to read. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So there's lots of pictures in this. So that's why it's so long. But it explains and it gives a list of like the effective insecticides. It right. shows the different stages. And it's something that I, that I encourage everybody to look up because, again, we're going to be dealing with this for a long time. And yeah. it's re- we have to be responsible and do the eradication of this insect mm-hmm. or. 
it's going to be awful. It's going to be awful. They they show like how far it's reached. I mean, I know now it's in Connecticut, not big. Wow. Um, I, I recently talked to my nephew, Will, who's in Clifton, New Jersey, up in North Jersey. You saw it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no. And and, and what it, it's kind of like how we were like two years ago. Right. You know, it's like where you saw one. I was like, wow, I saw one. And right. it's like one. one. Now we're seeing hundreds. Wow. And, it, and it's not cool anymore. No, it's not. And that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a major pest problem. Yeah. The biggest issue is when they're adults is the honeydew that they secrete, right. that it covers everything in a black soot. It's, it, oh, I mean, yeah. patio furniture, yeah. the sides of your house. Yeah. And that's right. It's not only on trees. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Because the way that it works is yeah. that after they mate, what they want to do is they want to climb and they want to go yeah. and lay their eggs right. somewhere yeah. up higher. And that that's why we've been encouraging, and I think it was last week or the week before, we encouraged people to start banding their banding trees. trees. Yeah, There are ways to band your trees that are safe for birds, and that you need to, right. if you're concerned about that, you can go online and find a way that you can put some screening up so that the birds don't attach themselves to it. Mm-hmm. Eh, you know, I, whatever. You know, if you're <laughs> really that concerned, go ahead and do it. Yeah. But the most important thing is is to get get, em. get yeah. the spotted lantern fly in so uh-huh. that they'll stick to that's that right. stuff. That's right. I mean, I love Bonnet has like a wide fly paper that's about six or eight inches wide. Oh, wow. And it makes it really easy because all you do is wrap that wow. around the tree. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> like we were saying, what do we call it? We say they're going to look, your trees will look a little bit like they'll have turtlenecks, so turtlenecks. spotted lantern fly. <laughs> But at least you'll stop them from laying eggs yeah. when they get up higher. Yeah. And the egg masses from now until oh. really December, yeah. you're going to be looking for those egg masses. Just keep your eye out. They it, When they first are laid, it has a sheen to it, and it almost looks like a piece of plastic yeah. that's molded onto your tree. As it dries, then it looks like more of like a gray mud. Yeah. You need to scrape that off with a credit card. And New Jersey... The New Jersey Nurserymen's Association. Did, did you get? We were at a meeting not too long ago, and they handed out the cards that were like these little credit cards credit that cards. were handing out to <laughs> scrape the scrape egg off. masses off of things. Right. So Easy. I don't know if uh, the Ner- New Jersey Nursery and Landscape Association. Maybe you can give them a call or oh, to yeah. check out them online mm-hmm. and see if you can get one of those credit cards. Oh yeah. That it was. Uh, it's not to mm-hmm. buy things with. Okay, <laughs> but it is to scrape the yeah. spotted lanternfly. Mm-hmm into a little baggie of alcohol this is a serious problem and that uh we need to be proactive we do and and one fortunate thing my my son-in-law went and contacted me he said hey i haven't seen many spotted lantern flies something up and he's in center well it's northern liberties in philadelphia and i said well wait you know you might see them i hope you don't i hope you don't and that uh I don't know. We we need to be proactive on this. The adults are there. Right. And you got a hotline here from New Jersey, Spot Lantern Fly. What do you got? It's a New Jersey Spot Lantern Fly hotline at 1 3284 Read that number again, Julio. That's 1 3284 And what that is, is that they're trying to trace to see the penetration, how far it's gotten in New Jersey. Pen. Pennsylvania has the same thing. same thing. So if you're in our Pennsylvania, New York, I'm sure has the same thing. You're just going to do spotted lanternfly, bad bug. You're, you're going to find, right. and and again, they want to know how far it's spreading. Mm-hmm. You know, and how about our trip to Ohio? Right? Oh, they yeah. didn't even hear of it. No, they didn't even know it. what's never a spotted it. lanternfly. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Rookies. <laughs> so anyway. All right. So everybody be proactive. We're going to be talking about spotted lantern flying a lot yeah, because here. we have a lot more information and to consider that this thing's only been around for seven years and it's already massing. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's crazy, crazy, crazy. And it's going to be something like, for instance, Japanese beetle, right? Japanese, if you ever oh, yeah. know what Japanese beetles, grubs in your lawn, eating your grass, the ones that fly around, they eat up your roses and yeah, all your ornamentals. That's right. 
is not a problem in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I think spotted lanternfly, you know, it may be from China or from Vietnam or wherever it came from. But uh, again, um, it may be a major problem here because there's no predators for it to speak right. of. Although we're seeing birds and we're seeing also um, uh, different in other predatory insects are feeding right. on them, but not in the quantity that we need. So, yeah. all right, be proactive, do your yep. part. There you go. All right, we'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Have you ever dealt with dead areas in your lawn that pull up like carpet? You most likely are the victim of the Japanese beetle larva eating your roots of your turf. Grubs sever the roots from the crown of the grass plant, causing the turf from being unable to take in water. It leaves you with a dead carpet of grass. Fertilum is a solution to stop those pesky grubs from destroying your lawn. High Yield Grub Free Zone is a season-long grub control that protects your grass from the damage caused by grubs, mole crickets, larva of the European crane fly, green june beetles, bill bugs, and many more subsurface insects. So if you use VPG High Yield Grub Free Zone and protect your lawn, it's an easy-to-use product and does all the work. Simply spread it and water it in. It's that easy. Your lawn will be protected from grubs and dozens of other lawn-feeding insects. Use the product the professionals use, High Yield Grub Free Zone. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilome's High Yield Grub Free Zone and expect to have the best looking lawn in the neighborhood. Church's Garden Center and Farms, Seashore Road, Cape May, New Jersey. Collegeville Do It Best, Ridge Pike, Collegeville, Pennsylvania. County Line Nursery, Harleysville Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Julio, regular listener, Pat called. Or actually, she texted the yeah, hotline. Did, yeah. We like it when people call, though. Yeah, we we want to hear their voice yeah, and call them it. back. Yeah, and have fun. Anyway, Pat texted. She's more comfortable with that already with her. But she has elephant ears that are getting a little big, and she's... She was not sure what to do. And then she asked a question about moss balls. Okay. Not moth no, balls. No, not moth balls. Moss <laughs> balls. Anyway, here, here. Julio, read, read what uh, her text said. Uh, Hi, guys. It's Pat. I called last year about the mammoth sunflower. Now I have a mammoth ele- elephant ears. <laughs> They're just too big for my yard. 
when can I get rid of them? And are moss balls really alive? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <that's>, all righty. <laughs> <laughs> One thing at a time. All right. All right. Elephant ears are pretty easy. First of all, if they're hanging over, and that she sent a picture, and I think they're hanging into like a, a sidewalk, right? Yeah. That's she right. can cut some of those leaves that are hanging yeah, I mean. and just prune them mm-hmm. and, so that they're a little more upright. That's and that will get rid of that problem. Mm-hmm. Trying to cut them back now, she's just a little yeah. early. A little early because I, I don't think she should do it because if she tries to pop them out of the ground and then mm-hmm. store them, they may rot. Yeah, you know, really they may dry rot or yeah, they just too may early. play. Too just, early for that. Huh? Yeah, regular <laughs> yeah. rot because right. it's just not cool enough. Yeah, it's hot. The other thing is just, pop them out of the ground and put them in a pot yeah. and just put them in the pot for now. Yeah. And then when we get to that cooler season after our first frost, then go ahead and do it. Right. I think, I think that's the best suggestion. Don't yeah. you? Or she can give it to a friend. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That's she, That's, that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> I recently talked uh-huh. to somebody and they said, a friend of mine gave me cannibals. It's like how we talk about giving somebody a plant. It's like, <laughs> right, yeah. they told me I got to dig these things up and I got to uh, do all this stuff. And they were complaining. Complaining about and You know who you are out there. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, but it's one of those things with uh, some of those summer flowering or right. summer bulbs, right. dahlias, right? right. Cannas, cow right. lilies. Mm-hmm. A lot of them have to be dug up. Or right. you can just... Let them roll them out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Enjoy them for the Enjoy season. For the season. You know what? Yeah. You're going to spend a hundred bucks for and have beautiful bulbs and right. things looking great. Right. And then, yeah. you know, you spend a hundred dollars <laughs> next year. Now, okay, yeah. hundred dollars sounds like a lot, but that's yeah. thirty dollars for a month uh, during the uh, summer, and it even goes into the fall, so oh, it's less yeah. than that. Yeah, I mean, come yeah, we on. have customers coming in. They buy all these palm trees and they get rid of them. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Don't, they don't want to store them. Yeah, you know? and I again, I, I don't want to get into the argument whether it's you know a wasteful thing, right? But it's their choice. Their plants, not puppies. Right. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, what about? Moss ball. Things, <laughs> all right. Right. I was a little. I was a little confused by that. Yeah, so Can I. you explain? We were, <laughs> we were like, like, what the heck is, is she that? talking about? Yeah. What is a moss ball? A moss ball is basically a, a, an algae. Okay, that's formed into a ball, and this is going back into uh, years back from a scientist who, from Japan who found it. Okay, and uh, we're talking way back in the 1800s. But you know, now it's being. You know, you can buy it online. Right. Okay, and it's called mar, mar- moss. Okay. And uh, basically, it's an algae formed into a ball. And you can have this in your home as a house plant. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. But it's yeah. got to be submerged, That's right? That's correct. It has to be in water. It can't be left out. All right. Because it's an algae, it'll dry up. <laughs> you All look right. at me like, oh. I am. I was like, oh, another oh. hard thing for someone to take care <laughs> yeah. of. You know, plants aren't hard uh, enough. I mean, oh, well, <laughs> I don't know. I guess some people, you know, have fun with stuff like that. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, they, yeah. Pat, they are alive. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. it depends. <laughs> They're, I tell you what, I don't. Kind of threw us off. Uh, right? Yeah, you know, it's because. It's just another thing to take care of. And I, yeah. they, they suspend in water and like a little, like say goldfish yeah. bowl. I mean, maybe they'd look cool. Oh, yeah. And that we've sold like marginal plants for putting in a, like a little pond planting mm-hmm. by, right. eh, you know, yeah. okay. Yeah. You do have to take care of them. I mean, you know, there's care. Like what, it, what like what? It doesn't need a lot of light. You know, it has to be, uh, you can't have it in the south side, which it's really direct so no sunlight. So t- no direct sunlight? No direct sunlight, no. You don't have to water it. No, you don't. But do you have to change the water? Probably. Yes, you do. You have to do it every once a week or twice, depending on how dirty it gets. <laughs> we can't even get people to water their plants. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Sorry. Sorry, and, and also all you of you to... out there. That... <laughs> right. And you also have to squeeze the dirt out of it, you know, once a week to get the dirt out of it. So, and then you have to roll it, kind of roll it back. So there is a little bit of maintenance. I'm involved. sorry. I'm looking at Julio like, you're <laughs> kidding me, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> kidding me. All right. Uh, so look, if you want to yeah. g- 
float moss balls. <laughs> you go right ahead. But uh, it is not endorsed by Bloomers in the Garden. <laughs> so they are alive. They, are they do alive. look cool. Martha Stewart probably has her staff take care of one. <laughs> but uh, I can't imagine. Oh, I can't imagine. You know? I, I know. I mean, I guess maybe you could have them in a fish tank. Yeah. You could maybe. An aquarium kind of thing. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. All right. That, that is not. <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> So we answered your question, Pat. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah. you sorry. stick with sunflowers and elephant ears. That's You're doing right. great. Yeah, doing great. You're doing great. great. The, the whole job. moss balls thing. It's yeah. like if you really want that, that kind of another a, thing to take care <laughs> of. Right. You know? <laughs> that kind of threw a, yeah. a moss ball at us. <laughs> right. That's exactly. It looks like it. It's a green meatball that floats <laughs> in the water, and then it, it looks like it's full of algae. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe in another well, lifetime. Ha- How about yeah. that? <laughs> well, we're having fun with it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right. We've got to take a break to, to collect ourselves. We'll be right back after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609 685 one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers T-shirt. Call or text us at six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five. 1880 and we'll see you in the garden. Your next house plant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that house plant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant paired with the perfect container can bring a dynamic change to your home. A house plant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Pearl, who was uh, listening to Bloomers in the Garden, hot, I mean, she called our hotline, but she listens on AM 800 WTMR. She did it for the first time. Thank you, Pearl, for Thank doing you, that. Pearl. She called uh, and wanted to know and has a two-part question and listen to what she has to say. Yes, this is Pearl, like the necklace, P-E-A-R-L. I just heard the end of your uh, garden show on, um, I believe it's 800 WTMR here in Philadelphia. And I missed what you said for the red hydrangeas. 
So could you please call me back and let me know what I would use for the red hydrangeas? And I got the holly cone for the blue hydrangeas, which were gorgeous this year. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Again, my name is Pearl, like the necklace. <laughs> and um, my phone number is 215-549-0409. Also, um, for my brother's sake, could you repeat what is the latest that trimmed the um, zellias? I've been telling him that Jack Eden said back in the 90s, do not trim your azaleas after July. Now, our landscaper's backed up, and he hasn't trimmed our hedges yet, and we have lots of azaleas here. I'm scared if he cuts them much later that I'm not going to get any flowers next year, next spring. So, all right. Thank you so much. Bye. So, well, they uh, yeah, she, Pearl like the necklace. I love that. Yeah, she's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yeah, um, she's really good. Easy red hydrangeas, yeah. okay, uh, like almost white hydrangeas, where you're not going to screw up the pH too much by just putting. Just go with a neutral pH with a product called a Spoma Plant Tone, that uh, is going to be an, an organic, all organic. It's also going to be something that's not going to fluctuate the pH too much. And then that way you don't have to worry about messing up the, the flower color. And, and and we say red. It's more like a really dark, 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 dark pink. Pink, yeah. You know, that's magenta pink. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's as close to red as they can get today. Yeah. So, again, just use just – don't worry about a supplement like lime or aluminum sulfate – just use regular Espoma plant tone, and they'll be perfect. They'll be a perfect. perfect yeah. So, and nice. you know, it's funny. She mentioned Jack Eden. Yeah. Jack okay. Eden, uh-huh. Maryland, Washington, D.C. area. He was a pioneer oh, of garden wow. radio. Yeah. He yeah. absolutely was. Contemporary of like Ralph Snodsmith. Do you remember Ralph Snodsmith? Yeah. He was in the New York City area. He oh, was, was he? yeah, oh man, wow. he was big. And that we're just kind of riding on their coattails, really. <laughs> you know? But uh, still, yeah. that uh, those guys have made a lot of gardeners. We hope we're doing the same yeah. thing. And Ralph was right. Or, and uh, rather, Jack Eden was right. Mm-hmm. If you have traditional azaleas like mm-hmm. Hino Crimson or Delaware Valley or Tradition or Hershey Red, mm-hmm. the older varieties, it's the, it's exactly right. You have to shear them. Before July, or else you are cutting off the blooms. Like everything now, there's a but. <laughs> yeah. There are now reblooming Blooming, azaleas. Yeah. Encore, that? Bloomathon, Rebloom. They bloom on new wood and old wood. And here we go again. <laughs> here we go again. Uh, we go. It's going to be just like with hydrangeas. Just like it's hydrangeas, like, yeah. where it's the, you need to learn a new a new thing, and, and it's called old wood, new wood, where the older varieties only bloom on their old wood. So that means their growth from last year. Where are the new varieties, where the repeat blooming hydrangeas and the repeat blooming azaleas will rebloom on their second set of growth. So they'll bloom when they first come out in the spring, then they'll bloom again on their new growth. Yeah. Now, those you could probably get away with shearing now. Mm-hmm. Yes? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, again, it, it's the they're always going to be the best bloom cycle in early spring. Yeah. If they're even the the new varieties are going to have that you know big bam you know, you know kabloom, kabloom. <laughs> yeah, and that right. where they'll be the best in spring and then they will put out a smattering of blooms throughout the rest of the summer. So, but as a as a rule, if you finish shearing by say Fourth of July or you finish shearing by mid July at the latest, even the reblooming type, that you'll be better okay, off. Okay, yeah. You'll be better off because your bloom in the spring will be that much better. Nicer, yeah. That much better. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. All right. Pearl, tell your brothers. <laughs> yeah, tell your brother. Let, let them yeah. know 
that you know you better and tell your landscaper, landscaper yeah how, how many times do we have customers come in that say hi oh. my hydrangea never blooms or yeah. or my azaleas never bloom yeah. and it's because the the landscape guys they just come in and it's like all right it's they time to do their you know they think it's time but yeah. they really don't know or they don't even think about it yeah. they just a, you know it's need a, it's a thing that they do <laughs> i almost said they need billable hours <laughs> that's not nice to my <laughs> landscape brother <laughs> but uh Listen, uh, you know, you, you'll know a good landscaper if he goes and he tells right. you that I, I, you know, you're going to cut off your flowers for next year if we attempt to, to go and yeah. take care of your plants now. Anyway. All right. That's it. Right. Pearl, I hope we answered your question. Yeah. Uh, anybody, if you have questions for us, please call the hotline. Like Julio and I said earlier, we love hearing people's voices and, yeah, we and then we'll call you back with answers of any of your questions. And that hotline number is 609-685-1880. All right, we'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other compost, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants, and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger more bountiful harvest garden tone is simple to use and safe for people pets and the planet no harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added you can find garden tone at fine garden centers visit espoma.com to find a retailer near you garden tone from espoma a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Julio, so what's bugging you? Oh, I'll tell you what. (laughs) I'll tell you what's bugging me. I know what it is. (laughs) Those little tiny ants Uh that you find in your kitchen. Right. You know, that all of a sudden they're like, you know, you, or you get one that's crawling on you. Have you had that? <laughs> yeah. Like where all of a sudden you look down, it's like, what the right. heck's growing, growing across my arm? <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of those little, like, yeah. ants, those little that's scout right. ants. Uh, scout. Oh, my gosh. Hey, uh, call the <laughs> Since spring, I, I have uh-huh. been playing, and they disappear. 
Yeah. It's like, all right, got him. You know, <laughs> feel like put my, you know, put the guns back in the holster and right. I'm all happy that they're gone. And then like, a, uh, you know, a week later or two days later, all of a sudden they're back. <laughs> they're back. They're, they're back I, to where they were. I, I mean, it's like, I don't know uh, where they're coming. Like, I think right. it's like there's a colony living in my basement somewhere. <laughs> <don't know>. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So if you uh, feel like I do about uh, these little ants, some people call them grease ants, but I don't know if they're that's exactly what they are. Right. Um, but they're tiny, and and what they do is they send out scouts, and yeah. and they actually leave a pheromone trail, uh, so <laughs> really? the other ants can find it. So they're wow. they send out the scouts are looking for food. Like think if you like spill sugar on, on your countertop. Oh yeah, I mean. The, like that's that's it that, that's it <laughs> all, they're like, uh, like we're, we're we found a home you know <laughs> right. we're not we're that's never right. leaving here uh, <laughs> you know? brother, look out. and so what they do is they leave that trail right. and then they just that leads all the other all ones the <laughs> all the way down and it's at night like oh. i had the lights off and it was in the middle of the night i had to go downstairs for something i don't remember dog needed to go out i flip on the lights and i move this thing and like they're right. like hundreds wow i'm like Many. Where are you in the daytime? You would be dead. <laughs> you would be, be dead. I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> anyway, oh, so I've been spraying delta methrin, delta methrin. another yeah. thrin. Yeah. It does work, mm -hmm. but you're dealing with a colony. Yep. So it's like, you know, they're just good soldiers. They just go off and die, and, and it doesn't do anything. The colony just sends, all right. You're next. Get the next, up there to the front line. You're right. going to have to deal with, you know, that spray oh or gosh. and ants. Did you know ants can't swim? Oh, no, I didn't. Know yeah, that. so that really? like when it, it rains real heavy, uh -huh. it like completely disrupts everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's so good. I mean, yeah, it's right. It's good. <laughs> I can All right, so if I sound a little frustrated, I am, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, like, you know, when you see the ants, you can't just go and like crush one, you know, and right. try and just think you got it because yeah. that trail is uh, they're following. So you got to wipe down your counters with bleach and you have to do, you know, I mean, I'm a, you know, I, I use Clorox. <laughs> I use I mean, Clorox. That, you go all the way. Right. I mean, I, I, <laughs> oh my but it's just because they're driving me crazy. All right. All right. <laughs> so that will basically clean up the pheromones that are attracting the other ones, but still, you got to get the colony where the queen is because the queen's laying eggs. Like, you know, crazy. she's just, yeah. you know, she's going, just, huh? she's just she keeps sh going. shooting out <laughs> eggs and putting more soldiers on the oh, line. Brother, look out. Uh, so anyway, so, so here's the best thing to do. There is traps. They, they work, mm -hmm. but to me, it, there's a bait and, I, there's a, a bunch of different companies that have baits. I mean, I know that. Uh, let's see, Taro. I like that one. Taro is yeah. the one that I yeah, that I started using yesterday because I've had it. I've yeah. had it. That's I, the one I always use. It always works yeah. for me, anyway. Okay, and see where I had been trying to spray with delta methrin, thinking mm -hmm. that there would be enough residual that I'd kill the next soldiers that come by. Right. But it's only killing the ones that you see. Right. Not the nest. Not the nest. Where. Tarot, you know what it is? Mm -hmm. The active it's borax. Borax, look at that. Borax, that's one of those things that you see on like Bugs Bunny cartoons. Yeah. Where it's, like, you know, it's like an old <laughs> old thing that was used back in the forties. <laughs> I remember borax. <laughs> you do. Yeah. So, there you go. To use it. <laughs> but what it does is that it's sweet, and they'll, they'll take it and they'll eat it, and then they'll go and they'll give it to the next one to feed the colony. And it wipes out the count. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, but again, uh, where and that it it just works best, and yeah. that you have to put it in areas where there's traffic, yeah. and you also have to to decide like, all right, are they coming from my garage? Because right. um, I guess I'm confessing because you have like a section <laughs> yeah. of leaves that you didn't, didn't clean up, clean and you up. really need to get them cleaned up because yeah. they're living underneath that. Mm -hmm. Uh, this morning, after we had a heavy rain last night, I lifted up a, a trash bag that was sitting uh -huh. there for a couple of days, filled underneath. Like uh -huh. it was that, it was like the ground was moving because it was all those <laughs> no. miniature little, little, uh, those little oh, ants. So it. they got a dose of Delta Especially methrin, and I put <laughs> one of those uh, bait things out there. It's war. It's war. It's war. It is war. <laughs> They're a Schroeder family. It is. <laughs> it is war right uh -huh. now. And, 
last year? No, no problem. No problem last year. No problems. And this year you told me that you had problems before, but you haven't had a problem, had but you also had a treatment for yeah. uh, termites, termites, right? Yeah. And now, I haven't had any at all. I haven't had any problems with my ants at all. And and see, it's the same active ingredient, ingredient that's going to control those ants. So, I, I mean, it, it you you have to go exterminator wise yeah. to get that done. But there are sprays, and again, it's yeah. delta methrin is going to be the spray. And again, thrin. Everybody, I hope you're learning yeah. bonus thrin, yeah. right? Yeah. Promethrin, right. a synthetic pyrethrin. Yeah. That that that's what's controlling them when they you hit them. But you have to get back to the whole colony, and the yes. only way to do that is through, again, that the the, the, the tra- not the, the traps will do it too, to a certain extent. But it's really the um, the ones where it has that borax yeah, actually, in there, yeah. where they'll exchange it yeah. to the next group, and then it actually gets to the queen and, and wipes wipes her the out. Whole, so the whole gang. Yep, <laughs> the whole gang. The whole gang. <laughs> Here, look what I've got to yeah. eat. You know, yeah, like, right. like somebody bringing you back a nice big fat hamburger from McDonald's. Yeah, <laughs> here, you're gonna have a yeah, heart that's attack. That's why they like. That's why they call them <laughs> grease uh, ants. <laughs> they do. They do. And like you know, if you have any pets, uh-huh. look around by where your pet uh-huh. food is. Pet food. You know that it'll be there. Even even bird feeders outside, yeah. if they're feeding on any, like the birds will kick some seed out. Yeah, check right. there, and and again that they'll eat there, and then colonize. Look for they send those scouts out in your house, and that if they find a spot, guess what? You've got new visitors and guests living <laughs> in your right. home, <laughs> and it, it's more of a pest. I mean, they could affect rotted wood and things like that, but there's a problem to begin with. That's not necessarily the ants. The ants are just exploiting it. And again, we're talking about the little tiny ants, not those great big, big monster ones, yeah. black ants. Yeah. Man, there's a scary. Yeah. You know. Really? Anyway, but the those, uh, those little ones are the ones that really bug you. Yeah. <laughs> boom, boom. Yeah. We're here all week. Tip your waitresses. <laughs> all right. Well, we've got another break. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Well, we're, oh, yeah, there's lots Bravo. to learn. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I mean, just in the insects alone. Oh, yeah. But everybody, you're, you're actually working your plants now for not only this fall, but also next spring. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. All right. Listen, next week we'll be right here, right back here in the garden. And we'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden.